Welcome to our deep dive into a revolutionary idea that could reshape our economic future. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, great, another one of those YouTube videos promising to upend the global financial system. And you'd be right to be skeptical, because frankly, most of those ideas are about as well thought out as a pigeon trying to build a nest out of paper clips and chewing gum. But this, my friends, is different. This is about ditching the whole damn fiat currency charade and going back to something real, something tangible, something, well, earthly. Today we're exploring why a land or water-based currency might be a better fit than a universal centralized global currency. Because let's be honest, the current system, it's about as stable as a drunk giraffe on roller skates. All right, let's talk about money or more specifically, the colourful bits of paper and increasingly worthless metal discs we pretend have value. Fiat currency, as it's called, is essentially based on nothing more than blind faith and the vague promise that someone, somewhere, will accept it in exchange for goods and services. It's like a collective delusion we've all agreed to participate in, which, let's be honest, is most of human history in a nutshell. But here's the problem. When your currency isn't backed by anything tangible, it's prone to all sorts of nasty things like inflation, manipulation, and the occasional economic meltdown. Think of it like building a house on sand. Sure, it might look good for a while, but the moment a strong gust of wind or, you know, a global pandemic comes along, the whole thing collapses faster than a poorly constructed Jenga tower. Now imagine instead a currency tied to something real, something fundamental to our existence, land and water. These are finite resources, essential for everything from growing our food to, well, staying alive. Unlike those ethereal digital tokens everyone's obsessed with, you can't just conjure up more land or water out of thin air, no matter how many algorithms you throw at it. A land or water-based currency would be directly linked to the actual value of these resources. The healthier your land, the more abundant your water, the stronger your currency. Let's be honest, our current economic system doesn't exactly reward sustainability, does it? I mean, we're essentially incentivized to exploit resources, pollute the environment, and generally treat our planet like a one-night stand we never want to see again. And surprise, it turns out that's not a particularly sustainable long-term strategy. But imagine if our economic incentives were aligned with the health of our planet. That's the promise of a land or water-based currency. Suddenly, taking care of the environment wouldn't be some hippy-dippy side project. It would be fundamental to economic prosperity. Think about it. If the value of your currency is directly tied to the quality of your land and water, you're going to think twice before dumping toxic waste in the river or clear-cutting forests for a quick buck. You'd be incentivized to invest in sustainable practices like regenerative agriculture, water conservation and renewable energy. This isn't some utopian fantasy. It's basic common sense. When your wealth is directly tied to the health of your environment, you're far more likely to treat it with the respect it deserves. All right, let's talk about the elephant in the room or rather the giant, faceless corporations sucking the economic life out of local communities. In our globalized world, it often feels like the little guy is at the mercy of multinational corporations and their endless quest for profit. A land or water-based currency, however, would inherently shift the balance of power back towards local communities. Because these currencies would be tied to specific regions and their resources, they would, by definition, be more localized. This means that decisions about how to manage those resources and by extension the value of the currency would be made at a local level. Farmers, fishermen, indigenous communities, the people who actually live and work on the land, would have a much greater say in how their local economies function. Imagine a world where your community has the power to set its own economic destiny, where the value of your currency isn't dictated by some Wall Street banker, but by the health of your local ecosystem. Let's talk about inflation, shall we? That insidious little beast that eats away at your savings and makes everything more expensive. It's like a never-ending game of monopoly where the bank keeps printing more money, devaluing the money you already have. And let's be honest, our current fiat currency system is practically designed to fuel inflation. Governments can print as much money as they like, and they often do, especially when they're trying to paper over cracks in the economy or fund the latest military adventure. 
But here's the thing about land and water, you can't just print more of them, they're finite resources and that inherent scarcity makes them a natural hedge against inflation. A currency tied to land and water would be inherently more stable because its value is grounded in something real, something that can't be manipulated by politicians or central bankers. It's like the difference between building your house on a foundation of solid rock versus a pile of inflatable pool toys. Look, let's be brutally honest, our current economic system is about as fair as a rigged carnival game. The odds are stacked in favour of those who already have money and power, while everyone else is left scrambling for scraps. A land or water-based currency, while not a silver bullet, could offer a path towards a more equitable distribution of wealth. How? Because it fundamentally challenges the idea that wealth is solely derived from financial assets. In a system where currency is tied to land and water, wealth would be more closely linked to how well a community manages its natural resources. Those who care for the land who use it sustainably and productively would be rewarded with a stronger currency and a higher standard of living. This isn't about taking from the rich and giving to the poor. It's about creating a system where wealth is generated by nurturing the very things that sustain us all, land and water. Now, I know what you might be thinking, but wait, wouldn't a land or water-based currency lead to isolationism? Wouldn't it mean countries retreating into their own little economic bubbles? Here's the thing, even in a world with localized currencies, there would still be a need for global trade and cooperation. Different regions have different resource strengths. Some are blessed with abundant farmland, others with vast reserves of fresh water, and still others with valuable mineral deposits. A land or water-based currency could actually enhance global cooperation by encouraging trade based on comparative advantage. For example, a country with abundant arable land might specialize in agricultural production, trading its surplus food for water or other resources from countries with different strengths. Imagine a world where global trade is based not on exploiting cheap labor or manipulating currencies, but on a fair exchange of resources that benefits all parties involved. Now, I'm not naive enough to think that transitioning to a land or water-based currency would be easy. There would be challenges, complexities, and probably a few epic meltdowns along the way. But think about it, our current system is literally burning the planet down around us. Maybe, just maybe, it's time to try something different. While there are challenges to implementing a land or water-based currency, the potential benefits for sustainability, local economies, and global cooperation are immense. It's a chance to hit the reset button, to reimagine our relationship with money and to create an economic system that values the things that truly matter, our planet and each other. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more insights into the future of our world.